Hey yo, what's good? It's Dino here, and we're back with another video for the crazy clips from all over the world. I hope everybody's doing well. Let's hop right into it. What's good, my beautiful people? Um, about to make this short and sweet. We talking about cardiovascular disease, all right? They tell us that it's genetics and all it is BS. It's not, all right? We got the vital statistics of the United States, 1960. You can find this on the CDC website, all right? It's where I'm pulling this from. We're going to scroll down to page 29 where we're going to find death rates for 59 select causes, all right? Right here is where our coronary disease is at. And just so you know, these numbers are out of 100,000 people, okay? So per 100,000. Here's our coronary section. I'm not sure if we need to add all these numbers up but um, to, to meet any of these. But even if you add all these up, you're going to get sub 2,000, okay? So that's 2,000 people. We'll max it out. 2,000 people dying every year from some type of coronary disease in 1960. Tell me how in the world we got to one in four deaths are caused by a coronary disease. Y'all let me know y'all thoughts, man, because the math ain't math. More medical studies, uh, medical advancements, uh, technology advancements. Let's see what else. The things we eat the stuff that's in everything we buy at the store um there's a whole bunch of reasons <laughs> one of my favorite weird science facts is that if somehow sound could travel through space the sun from earth would be about as loud as a jackhammer i mean it's a giant open fusion reactor it makes a lot of noise so even 93 million miles away it would be about a hundred decibels. You'd have to shout to be heard at all times because of the loud ass sun in the sky. The actual noise would be like a rhythmic bass and it'd be about as loud as a concert, a train whistle, a leaf blower. It would be very annoying. Yeah, I'd always imagine that it would sound like the hypno toad from Futurama if we could hear it. The industry is a God blessing. You need to stop it. God don't like that we in this music business. God don't like that we talking about money, cars, and clothes, and hoes. So if you want to be in, the, be in this music industry and you want to get money, understand what it comes with. That it's not from God, it's from the, it's from the devil. Understand, I just want you to understand that, you know, because I don't want y'all to get lost in the sauce and, 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 and complain what y'all going through and why y'all going through it. Period. It's not from God. Stop saying it's a God blessing. It's not from God. It's from the devil. He gives you what you want so you can destroy yourself. Now, there you have a really big music artist talking about how the secular music industry is of the devil. He's completely in that industry, completely blemished into that world. And here you have him saying it's of the devil. Mark 836. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Matthew 4, 8 through 9, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor, the glamour, the fame, the cars, the clothes, the drugs, the women, the parties. This is what it would look like in our modern day. All this I will give you, I, the devil says to Jesus, will give you. He said, if you bow down and worship me. So there you have the devil offering Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor if Jesus would bow down and worship him. So my question is this, these people out here who be winning these awards, promoting violence and negativity and drugs and sexual morality, but yet thanking God, what God do you think they're talking about? Do you think they're talking about Jesus who said, die to yourself? Who says you must pick up your cross daily? Who said to turn away from your wicked ways and sin no more? You think they're talking about Jesus? Or do you think they're talking about the devil? Who was okay with blessing you talking about violence? Who was okay with blessing you talking about partying and sexual immorality? Well, if you don't know, I'll give you the answer. They're talking about the devil. Even the ones who don't realize it, even the ones who are in a space of delusion. My friend, when you're thanking God for that, you're not thanking Jesus Christ. You're thanking the devil. Whether you know it or not, 
to say God is blessing you when you are doing things completely opposite to what God wants you to do is buffoonery. Wake up, see the light, repent, change your ways, leave the world, follow God, seek Christ. Absolutely. free device to keep a mobile phone away from the head and body because mobile phones and wi-fi devices emit pulsed microwave radiation 900 times a minute it's looking to for a signal it says to the tower where are you here i am where are you here i am it's smart that's how it's supposed to do now when the phone rings the worst time for you to put a phone right next to your head is when you answer it and say hello because it's smart and it goes to max power and bone marrow and look here at the radiation as it gets into the groin area and that's just from having a mobile phone modeled into the pocket the united states magazine consumer reports recently recommended that nobody keep a phone in their pocket nobody and in fact if phones were tested in pockets they would exceed the as test mm -mm -mm. nope i don't even really use my phone unless i have to a person can a regressive entity take over a human body the answer to that is absolutely yes and the process <coughs> is actually very simple they abduct someone they bring him to death very slowly, and the moment his last breath, his essence, leaves the body, they replace it with another. Several m moments later, that person, that, b that body will rise off the table. It'll be the same physical body, but inside, it has a completely different agenda, because now it's a different soul. That technology does exist. Would you call that a message? Yes, I would. Would they have the memory of the original body? Yes, they do. But I, my understanding is that there's anywhere from three to seven months where there is a transition period. And generally when it happens to a major figure, they will be out of the limelight or be very rarely seen. Mm, what do y'all think about that? Soul swapping, they're cloning bodies and soul swapping into the new bodies. And then when you don't see them and they're disappeared for a little bit and they're off the cameras, they're really just adjusting to the new bodies and being reminded and given like textbooks and all this information on their lives about that. That's how they get the clones is what he's talking about. That's, that was very close. So lucky. In the future, this is where we need to have this, the technology to tell what's fake. I mean, Adam, I'm not picking on you, but what if somebody, what if you break up with a girl and she decides to say to AI, hey, give me a Adam Sosnick Smashing. and your girl Tom, stop in a it. Tom, VIP Tom, don't, area, don't, don't, in the back don't, corner don't, of a club in a VIP. Don't, don't, what, and what if it looks incredibly true i don't know Tom, and guess a horrible what example guess what no 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 it's not a horrible example no look, i look, look I'm what gonna look go what, out on a limb and say it's a horrible example tom thanks no it's Bring it's, your... it's not it's a someone decides to make a retaliation and they go and they go after you and you go and take a look what duke lacrosse you take a look what the law enforcement did with trevor bauer both all those people were innocent by the way mm -hmm. and now you put what looks like authentic evidence that looks like it came from a camera phone on top of it this is this is really a slippery slope scary but beware they can see everything yeah, we got to be careful with that AI stuff, especially if Sora gets released to the public. Even if it's on a paid model, dude, there are bad people with lots of money. Trust me. So, like, even if it gets on a paid model, like, you got to understand uh, it still needs to be regulated because, like, people are going to be able to generate video that, like, entire movies 
in, even if they have to do it in bits and pieces like stop motion where you take pictures of something then move it and take another picture even if it's done that way people will use this to their advantage and we have to figure out which advantages are exactly um, bad another time I had a, a friend of mine killed and I was very upset and I asked this Vietnamese for his ID card and he said and that means I don't understand in Vietnamese. And just pissed me off. So I pulled out my knife and I killed him. And uh, it didn't bother me at all. I just called in. I said, one DC killed. And they said, how do you know he's a DC? And I said, because he's dead. And they laughed and said, okay. <laughs> you know. Uh, and I'd come in and people would ask me what's going on out in the front. And I'd tell them. And uh, they keep it sharp or how many kills you have. And I'd come in and they'd show me how many I have. And what it is, every time you kill someone, you have to report it. And uh, you have to search them for papers and stuff. Right, I have a reason. But, uh, this is something else, body count. If 10 of us would go out and I'd come back with only five men, we'd lost half our men. And you couldn't say that you didn't see any enemy. So you could have only killed one enemy. And by the time it would get up to the high command, you know, you killed 50 of them because they couldn't say that they, they lost five men taking one. So the body count's a bunch of shit. You know, what they say and what they get is different things. Like you'd read the newspaper on Operation Medina, uh, 200 of us went out and about 47 of us made it back and they just ambushed us and wiped the hell out of us and I didn't I didn't see any gooks man they were sitting in the trees dropping grenades on us and they had machine guns on the front and the side and uh, the newspaper said we had all these kills you know I didn't know what the hell they were talking about I never saw any kills but they just didn't want like to admit that all those men get killed for nothing that's really sad that's that's very sad man <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but why though? There was a guy that used to uh, run around the lake and talk to us when we were fishing. We we're probably like 13. Seemed like an old gentleman. This dude just becomes my friend, like nice and slow, nice and slow. Brings me lunch. I even went to his house once. And then one day, he tells me he loves me. And I said, I think I said something like, yeah, I really like you too. He goes, you know, there, there can't be love without sex. And I remember thinking, what? Whoa. Like, what did he just, what happened? And then I remember thinking, what a dummy I am. I thought this guy just liked me. He was, I was his buddy. Like he's gonna teach me things. He just likes teaching people. He's just really smart. And I had my hand on a nice Swiss army knife. Oh, and all sure. I was thinking is, and I hope I don't have to f try to use this. He was a big guy. You know, I was 13. I don't know what I weighed, 120 pounds or something. <laughs> Less than that, like, probably. This guy might beat the sh out of me and rape me here in the woods. I told him to get the f away from me. And he told me to not be upset. He didn't want to be violent. He wanted to trick me into f him. He, wanted, he didn't want to rape me. He wanted to trick me into f him. I got real lucky that that was the case. Mm -mm. Man, that's a crazy story. Hey there, Texans on TikTok. It's Jason with Texas Storm Chasers here to tell you about April 8th, 2024. Why is this date significant, you might ask? Well, it is the Great American Solar Eclipse. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a total eclipse of the sun with the moon just oriented right in front of the sun throughout four and a half minutes of the day on April 8th. If you are in Texas or if you are anywhere near Texas, you want to get in on this path of totality, you're going to want to be in that orange zone. Mm -hmm. That orange zone, specifically that center line through the middle of the orange zone is going to be your longest duration total eclipse up to four and a half minutes long going to be very special once in a lifetime experience guys get there do not miss out on this areas include eagle pass del rio uvalde Kerrville, up through the hill country into belton temple waco morgan's point up to Corsicana, Dallas, Texas as well, mm -hmm. over to Terrell, Emory, Paris, Tyler, and Texarkana. Again, be there April 8th. Ask off of work now. Yeah, we're pretty much going to be right there, man. Should be pretty cool. Owe me money. I came to take what you have. 
in that world, that was considered as permissible. These are one of the rules of something that was permissible in that world. Um, long story short, um, in December 1997, I get arrested for, can you spend the next 48 years living like this? And I said, I couldn't do it. And I, um, I had lost all my privileges. They took everything from me. I was in Southport at the time, which is closed now. Uh, it's a solitary confinement facility in New York State. You guys read that, right? That's wild. Ugh. There's just rats everywhere. Oh, they're getting in the food, too. No. It was actually eight years ago, in December, roughly eight years ago. And since that time, we've landed 260 times. The 260 landings, it's just like, wow. There were a lot of people that said that it couldn't be done. And then there were a lot of people that said, even if it could be done, it's a dumb idea. Mm -hmm. That it wouldn't, it wouldn't pay off. That it wouldn't, you know, wouldn't make sense. But we've shown that, in fact, it is absolutely the right idea. Reusability is the key to a great future in space. It's essential. We need reusability for rockets, just like we have reus reusability for cars, for airplanes, for bicycles, for horses. Obviously, reusability is, is essential. And the, the fundamental invention that is necessary for humanity to become a, a multi-planet species is a full and rapidly, basically rapidly reusable, reliable rocket. I mean, it's incredible how much has happened in eight years. I wonder what, what, what will things be like eight years from now. Hopefully we have, I think we will have landed on Mars. And I think we will have sent people to the moon. And, and maybe if we get lucky, we will have sent people to Mars uh, within eight years. But the key question sort of, I think, about for civilization is, our, the, the key test perhaps for civilization is, do we make it through the spermy great filter of being a, going from a one planet civilization to a multi-planet civilization? And if I don't know that we will. And dang, Elon, you packing on the pounds, bro. Look at that. <laughs> Climate in 2024, unusually hot and cold winter conditions are expected to occur. By the end of this video, you'll grasp the summer forecast. It's vital to know the ocean is the main climate conductor on Earth. And the climate on land depends on the temperature of the ocean surface. By 2022, the surface ocean temperature chart looked like this. Furthermore, for the period 2015 to 2022, they were the warmest. To grasp, warmer sea, hotter on land, stronger hurricanes, more evaporation, more precipitation, more floods. In 2023, all seven tropical cyclone basins recorded Category 5 typhoons for the first time, breaking all previous observation records. Record-breaking rainfall in 140 years, hottest year ever. Acapulco, Mexico, destroyed by Hurricane Otis. See how 2024 began? You'll understand. Yeah, that's some wild stuff right there. The weather has been going crazy everywhere. What is this, man? Sesame seeds. Bro, what is this? One, two, three, four. Where's the fifth one at? Right there. Fifth. It's in a the cloud. It was just about to look like it was about to morph together or something. It's the, yeah, oh, there it is. Did these disappear and reappear? I don't know, I'm tripping, maybe just went on my eyesight. Right, those three up there. Bro, what is this? Nah, this gotta get sent in. Bro, come on, what is that? What is that, man? That's not normal. Strange stuff in the sky. It's five black dots. Mm-hmm. I thought I was tripping. Okay, so the two at the bottom are close to me. Oh, I see you. It's either drones or something weird. But I do know that in the time that I was out there, for the short time I was out there, uh... I saw a lot of crazy stuff up in the sky, and everybody was just like, yep, nothing to see here, move along. Mm. 
Mm. Is that a pangolin? Egypt threatens Israel. Now, things are getting very heated between the countries of Egypt and Israel. Egypt is even threatening Israel to pull out of their peace agreement if Palestinians surge the Egyptian border to flee the war. This is an absolutely terrible and disgusting situation. Here's what's going on. You may have heard that Egypt has sent a ton of troops, to include tanks, regular ground personnel, to block their borders, to not allow for the surge of human life, Palestinians, to go from Palestine into Egypt. This is because um, Israel, or IDF forces, they will be going into the city of Rafah to clear out the final Hamas battalion. However, Egypt is not confident in Israel, um, Israeli abilities to allow for civilian passage throughout all of Gaza. I mean, look, if I lived in Palestine and I needed to go somewhere, I'm heading to Egypt. I'm not going back into my worn, torn country. And everyone is watching to see if Egypt will actually go through with this and pull from the peace deal. If this happens, we have a whole new situation in the Middle East. Yeah, that'll be a whole new can of worms. Now take a look at this. What do you notice about this scene? Watch very closely. What do you notice about that? Is that your run-of-the-mill warship? What does that look like to you guys? No, it's Let's a whole bunch of containers again. full okay, of pay missiles. Pay close attention. What is that missile firing from? And what kind of ship is this? Got to pay close attention. To me, that looks like a shipping container doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It looks like a cargo shipping container. Well, this is actually called the Club K Container Missile System. It's something we've talked about in our series on asymmetrical warfare before. This is the first time I've actually seen it in action. We've seen simulations of it. We've known that it's been tried and tested and existed, or at least uh, I've known. I've never actually seen it being demonstrated like this. Now, understand what this means, okay? Number one, they're simulating attacks with these massive bombs on Israeli air bases. And they're also doing it from commercial cargo ships. Or they're mm -hmm. demonstrating that you could have these in commercial cargo ships. That's now, think about whole, how many of these that's, that's, that's it, systems man. you could have on one cargo ship that was disguised as a civilian commercial vessel. And that's the problem. This is why this is asymmetrical warfare. This is a non-conventional form of warfare where you could effectively have many of these parked off the coast of Israel or no traversing the know. Mediterranean or traversing the Red Sea, wherever you wanted them, under the guise of a commercial vessel. Now you have to presume that every Iranian vessel is potentially carrying one of these and is potentially a target okay iran was sending a message here and perhaps someone was sending a message back the question is what is iran going to do next are they going to respond in kind and are they going to start attacking other countries who are loosely affiliated or fully fledged allies of israel are they going to start attacking their critical infrastructural facilities uh, no clue We'll have to see what they do when it happens. OpenAI did it again. They have shocked the world. They have released a brand new text-to-video model called Sora, and the results are mind-blowing. This is something that nobody expected. I think we uh, were expecting GPT-5. We were expecting something else to come down the pipe. But this is remarkable. Text-to-video to date has advanced a lot. Companies like Runway or Pika give you the option to do all sorts of really cool things in your videos. This is is a magnitude better. These can be up to one minute. They are picture perfect. And the amount of things that are happening in these videos blows away any of the other things that I've seen so far. And this is somebody who's watched this space for quite a while. This is not out yet. It has just been announced and it is red teaming right now, which means that people are testing it to see what they can get out of it and what they can't get out of it. The videos they showed have a wide variety of use cases and they're gonna replace a lot of things. There is stock footage. There are animated movies that look as good as Pixar. It is not available to the general public yet, but this is the biggest leap that I've seen in AI in a year. This is a massive, massive deal. Go check it out. It's on their website, openai.com slash Sora, S-O-R-A, and we'll have more of it on this week's show.
Oh, just imagine how many B-roll shots are going to be. You know, that's so much money saved <laughs> on movies and TV. Just B-roll out the boot. I'm not trying to be racist, okay? But it's a black thing, okay? You know, I was trained. And most black folks, they hide cash or they keep cash. And uh, I was... No, I train. You always keep some cash because uh, I've been places and just because of the color of my skin. For example, I took a fellowship at Harvard when my daughter was just a, a if I might, Your Honor, if I might, when I was just uh, she was just, you know, maybe three years old. And I remember going to a restaurant in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and I had a American Express credit card and maybe a visa or whatever. And uh, I had a lot of um, what they call traveler's checks. I don't even know if they still have traveler's checks, but traveler's checks. And there was a sign said, you know, with the credit card, for whatever reasons, the man would not take my American Express credit card. So I pulled out my visa card and he wouldn't take my visa card. So then I pulled out my traveler's checks. He said, we don't take checks. Now, this was beautiful traveler's checks. This was money. I had a $10 bill. I'll never forget this as long as I live. And uh, he said, uh, uh, the bill for my wife at the time, uh, Fonny's mother, Fonny and myself, was like $9.95. And I had a $10 bill. That was all that. I always remember that. Um, but even before that, I've always kept cash, I, you know, and I've told my daughter, you keep six months worth of cash always. For example, I had three safes in my house. Um, I put some of my clients stuff there, too, uh, things I didn't want other lawyers to be. I mean, because you're always in a firm and I knew that there were special conditions. So some of my clients, things I would bring home, put them in the safe. But I've always kept safes. And as a matter of fact, I gave my daughter uh, her first cash box and told her, always keep some cash. Mm. That's good advice right there. I'm sorry that happened to you, though, man. That's unfortunate. <laughs> That was wild. What was that? That's some crazy activity right there. Mr. Schellenberger, when you last testified before our subcommittee, you responded to a question from Chairman Jordan when he asked about the Hunter Biden laptop story. And I'm going to quote what you said. You said, quote, now maybe the FBI agents who were going to Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook and to Twitter executives were warning about a, and were warning about a hack and leak potentially involving Hunter Biden. Maybe those guys didn't have anything to do with the guys that had the laptop. We just don't know. Well, you know what? Now we do know. And we know after interviewing Laura Dumlow, who at the time of the Hunter Biden laptop story was on the Foreign Influence Task Force, she, we have learned from her that she and others on that task force did in fact know about the laptop before the New York Post story broke and they mm -hmm. knew it was his. In other words, the work done in the year since the release of the Twitter files has continued to expose the extent of the censorship industrial complex. These discoveries show the importance of your testimony and the oversight work that has been done by this committee. What do you think this shows in terms of the complexity and scope of the censorship industrial complex? What I mean by that is even though with the trove of information that you released over a year ago or approximately a year ago, we're still filling in the gaps to understand the extent of what the federal government has engaged in in terms of violating the First Amendment. Yeah, I think what it, I mean, one of the most important things that it shows is that the censorship is in service of disinformation. It wasn't that they prevented the New York Post from publishing. It wasn't even that that, that they did the tweet eventually did come back. Um, on Twitter is eventually allowed, but the disinformation that was planted that my, myself and all my family and friends believed was that there was something fraudulent about the Hunter Biden laptop, which we now know was actually the Hunter Biden laptop. It's been verified now by all the major media and everybody else. So, but it created the perception that it was uh, misinformation by the Russians. And of course that conspiracy theory continues to be peddled today. 
So that was what mm-hmm. it did. And, and that's how these guys at CTIL thought about it. That's how all these operatives that are used to waging disinformation campaigns and psyops in foreign countries turned those tools against the American people. They have been yes. turned against the American people. Absolutely. Uh, what do you think about the fact that the FBI agents warning Twitter about a hack and leak were the same agents who knew that? Oh, the y'all be quiet. The legitimacy of that laptop. What do you think about those? Uh, that was just getting on my nerves to hear that like yeah 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 we all knew it was legit to begin with that is absolutely huge but uh i'm gonna go ahead and call it at a coconut crab The Texas National Guard is getting a new base camp near Eagle Pass that will consolidate forces that have been scattered across South Texas. The first phase of construction is underway and will provide 300 beds to National Guard members by the end of April. It will amass a large army in a very strategic area. It will increase the speed and flexibility of the Texas National Guard to be able to respond to crossings. Today, Texas Governor Greg Abbott did not reveal the price tag for the 80-acre base camp, but said the financial impact will be minimal because troops will no longer stay in hotels and other facilities. This will Mm. improve the quality of conditions and lower the cost uh, of those conditions. So this is going to be a win-win. Uh, for the National Guard and for the state of Texas. Construction is starting on the base camp when the number of illegal border crossings near Eagle Pass is decreasing. The Texas border czar attributes that to tighter border security, including stringing more razor wire along the Rio Grande River. There was a single day when <laughs> there was looking. over 6,000 people that came through that border right there in Eagle Pass. And to see those numbers decrease the way they have at the significant number they have to where we've gone to 1% of what was crossing a month and a half, two months ago. I think it's phenomenal. Today's announcement comes just one day after the state's new immigration enforcement law was challenged in federal court. Senate Bill 4 is the latest effort to deter people from crossing the Rio Grande. It makes illegally crossing the border a Class B misdemeanor, carrying a punishment of up to six months in jail. Across really? Texas, faith leaders, grassroots organizations, and nonprofits are firing back at Governor Abbott, saying Senate Bill 4 should not be allowed to go into effect next month. Let's call SB 4 what it is. It's racism. It is profiling community members in this city who don't speak English, who don't look like the government. I declare, as Moses declared so many years ago, let my people go. Liberate the liberated. Walk with those who are in solidarity and stand to end SB4. Mm. Well, good for Texas for actually doing something, though. That's crazy. And that's in New Hampshire? How strange. A big threat. The United States has announced to the world that Russia officially has the capability to launch anti-satellite nukes within outer space to take out satellites. So should we be freaking out? What is going on? Everyone calm down. The United States has known about this even all the way back in the 80s, but now all of a sudden they have shed light to this program and the capability is now there. Now I should mention that Russia has denied all allegations and they never intend on doing this, but I figured you should know what exactly this is. An anti-nuke or anti-satellite nuke is essentially you launch a nuke into outer space, you designate a satellite's path or orbit, whether 
far or near Earth orbit. We can get mm -hmm. into that later. But essentially, the radiation will disrupt the path of not only one satellite, but many other satellites that are within that rotation or orbit around Earth. Mm -hmm. So that's a very big issue because then all of a sudden, when you're trying to go through your phone, it might not work because this capability could destroy all communications on specific countries. So that's what's going on right now. But I advise you to calm down because this capability will most likely not happen. Russia saying they don't want to do it. And even US advisors are saying it's probably not going to happen anyway. Yeah, it's so unlikely that it'll happen that like we'd have to be in like a Blade Runner type future. <laughs> gonna be late again and you know that I want to get there on time. Roy! Roy, 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 Roy! Hey! Honey! Simon! Simon! John Brown it. Simon! Schnitzel, Bratwurst, Sauerkraut. Wo bist du? Where are you, Shatsi? I'm going back to the fair. I know we went the other day, but that was for your tractor pull and the family snakes alive picture. So we went to a wellness in California. <laughs> what in the world? Tell me about that. What was that? A wellness center. Why do you go to wellness center? I don't know. Will <laughs> took me there. Why do you think we took you there? I don't know. You thought we just had nothing else for you to do? Correct. What? And this right here is why so many people believe in like cloning and and not to say that stuff ain't true. Who knows what's true? But these celebrities be out of it. I mean. I know people go through things, but some of them is just like you look in your eyes and it's like soulless. Yeah, I don't know. There was she said correct, like a like a robot, like a AI or like something pretending to be a human. That was wild. What in the world? Why is her face like that? In Canada, you're not allowed to be from Palestine anymore. You know what I find hilarious about Canada refusing to put Palestine in the birth country form on people's passports? Before 1948, when Israel didn't exist, the Zionists that wanted to move into Palestine had to apply for a Palestinian visa. Yes, you heard that right. This is an application of the former prime minister of Israel, Shimon Peres, literally trying to get a, a visa to enter Palestine. If you take a real close look at the top of the paper, at the top of the application, it says mm. government of Palestine. As Blair had put it extremely well, this is a form of cultural genocide to try to eliminate the existence of any sort of Palestinian state. Palestine has always been a land. Even under the occupation of the British, it was still called the Mandate of Palestine. It wasn't called Mandate of Israel. It wasn't called Mandate of Zionism. There was no reference to the Jewish or Israeli people at all. So to try to eliminate the Palestinian identity is absolutely ridiculous. Her grandmother, along with many of our grandmothers and great-grandmothers, are older than the state of Israel. The displacement that they experienced in the Nakba and in 1967 is still very real, and their identity is still Palestinian regardless of where you try to send them. And even those of us who were kicked out or never experienced living in Palestine, our identities are just as Palestinian as our fathers and our grandfathers and our mothers and our grandmothers before us. There is nothing y'all can do to eliminate our identity, and anybody who has the power to hold the Canadian government accountable, please do. Mm. That is some information I don't know anything about. Defense activist from New York, Sheldon Johnson, was just found and arrested because he had a severed head and severed body parts in his Harlem apartment. Body parts belong to a dude named Colin Small. I got into school, I got my GED. 
Um, from there, I got involved in um, correspondence courses. I started interacting with guys who were teaching ART, aggression replacement training, and I started to begin to understand how these concepts work, what positive visualization is, um, deep breathing, how to remove yourself, conflict resolution. Apparently, this dude and Smalls, Johnson and Smalls, had beef back when they were in prison. Johnson never let the shit go. And he talks about reform, prison reform and all that, but it doesn't seem like any of that shit fucking worked because here we are now, only a year after he got out of fucking prison, this dude is going back fucking seriously, heinously murdering someone. What the fuck did Colin Smalls do? That's crazy. That's, that's absolutely wild. And the dude was on Joe Rogan's show like a month ago. Anyways, I got one more for everyone. A simplified version of everything that happened on the news today. Gen Z people always have their phone on do not disturb. Because apparently if their phone is not on do not disturb, it causes too much anxiety. So it's easier to just put all notifications on do not disturb completely. The I'm not a robot verification is scary. According to recent studies, it's able to check your browsing history. And it's able to look at all your previous data to decide if you're actually a human. This is crazy and it's really creepy. Keep this in mind because they might steal your information. Apparently lying on the ground is really good for you. Psychologists are saying it helps slow down anxious thoughts and relax your mind. I don't really get how that's even possible, but okay. The first case of measles since 2019 was just recently reported. Measles was completely eliminated in 2000. Several outbreaks have occurred recently in unvaccinated communities. Within mm. the past year, 41 cases of measles have been recorded across 16 states. That's it for today. Follow for more daily news. That's some wild stuff. Wild, wild stuff. Measles on the way back, huh? I don't know. Anyways, that's what we got for today. That's another video to throw in the archives. I hope that everyone had fun hanging out. Appreciate all of you for coming through every time I post a new video. Go ahead and do me a favor and hit that like, hit that subscribe. Yes, Dino. Okay, Dino. Hit that notification bell that way you get a notification every time i post a new video like this and uh until next time peace